I'm Jeff Squire. Uh, I'm a professor in the physics department at Colorado School of Mines, and we're at the Center for Micro-Integrated Optics for Advanced Bioimaging Control. And what we're looking at today is uh, a femtosecond micro-machining workstation where we use femtosecond laser pulses to uh, fabricate small uh, devices that, in principle, are going to enable laboratory on a chip type technology. So, uh, for example, if you wanted to make a small portable healthcare diagnostic that measured uh, blood characteristics, uh, we want to do the 3D prototyping with the femtosecond lasers to, to create those kind of devices. We're developing new laser micromachining technologies specifically for these biological applications such as cell counting and um, cell stretching. And what we're developing is a handheld device that could do a complete blood cell analysis. So we're using the laser to machine little micro channels or channels about the size of human hair that you could flow a cell sample through. And here in the background, we have a blow up of this device. So this is just um, a portable device that could be taken somewhere. Um, here and here, you would insert the cell sample and then we've fabricated little channels to flow the cells through. And we also um, look at the cells using laser light. We've um, machined channels here to accept fiber optics. So these are the same fiber optics that would be used in the telecom industry. So they're just pennies a meter to insert these fibers. And then we're able to accurately investigate the number and quantity size of cells that are flowing through the device here. Hopefully you can see it. We've actually got the Fendel second laser kind of uh, cutting a channel in glass uh, over here. And the reason that we use femtosecond lasers to begin with is that compared to a normal laser, a femtosecond laser, the damage uh, reverts from a statistical to a deterministic type behavior. So where a normal laser, when it makes a cut, it heats up the material and the material explodes off and you're left with a really ragged cut. With a femtosecond laser, the ablation is entirely deterministic. The intensity is so high, it's what we call plasma medi mediated ablation. Uh, the energy is absorbed and you just ionize and lift off a perfect layer. So there's no thermal damage zone. Um, and so that enables us to make uh, these devices with uh, e extreme precision. We can actually make nanostructures with this type of uh, femtosecond micromachining. What we're doing here uh, that's unique about this system compared to other femtosecond micromachining setups is that we focus the laser light in space and in time. So believe it or not, this is a 4D lens here. So the light is collapsing spatially and it's collapsing temporally uh, at the exact focal plane. And this just gives us unprecedented precision in terms of being able to uh, ablate and manipulate materials uh, with the laser. Actually, why don't we see now what's going to happen is watch when this thing is it's going to hit a turning point and we're going to start dragging the glass through in the other direction. And you're going to see the, the pattern on the, on the camera is going to change. Before we had a half moon shape. Okay, now we're pushing the glass through the other direction and look at the pattern on the camera has, has completely changed. Oh, it's going past the holder here. But now you're going to see that half moon's disappeared and we're, we've got a perfect spot on the camera, on the monitor there. And the only thing, we're just dragging this glass back and forth through the focus, and the glass is perfectly homogeneous. But we're seeing these different patterns appear on the monitor, whether we're pushing the glass uh, left to right or dragging it right to left. Oh yeah, that's amazing. What does that mean? Yeah, the white light has completely changed. Right. And this asymmetry is, is totally new. It's a totally new phenomenon and it's a result of this space-time focusing. Just think of these laser pulses as they're like pancakes flying through the air. And normally when they're focused, this pancake would be, uh, let's see, do I have a little prop? Yeah, so like if I, here's, here's the piece of glass, and if my hand's the pancake, normally it's, it's normally in, instant on it. So all the light hits it at once. But with this 4D lens, what's happening is the pancake is tilted, and so it hits it, this edge first, then it goes through, uh, the plane of the focus. And it's this tilt, as opposed to being normally incident, that's, really, that's uh, producing these new effects. And we know it's related to the fact that the laser pulse, when it hits the target, is actually tilted 
in time on the target, which is really unique to this, this setup. And it, it takes a little bit to get your head around that, uh, but it, it's really going to enable us. We, we've already discovered that we can make unique 3D structures with this tilt in the pulse in space and time. Um, so it's, it's a great example of basic science leading to applied technology almost immediately.